Hey, welcome to Daily Faith. Today, my name is Philip Cameron, and boy, do we have a great show. A brand new guest on Daily Faith, and I am so excited for you to meet Mark J. Mark Johns from Canvas Church in Alucha. I hope I... When you're a Scotsman, you can get off with murder as far as mispronouncing names. And when he comes on, he's going to correct me, I'm sure, because I know I've said that wrong. But I just... We, we just... We met this man, uh, I'll, I'll tell you in a little while. We've just come back from a whole week. My grandkids get off for spring break, and we've just spent a whole week in Florida. And I want to tell you, this, this dear friend is in Florida, and I'm jealous because today in Tennessee, it's back to winter time. And you're down there for a week, and you're thinking, oh, this is great. I love it. This, the, the winter is over and gone, and the time of the singing of the birds has come, and it's warm. And I'm back here, and I'm thinking, what am I doing in Tennessee when I could be down in Florida? So help me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me for being jealous of this dear friend. And um, just re redeem my evil thoughts in Jesus' name. Amen. We've got a great show. Listen, we, we are so excited you're with us. Daily Faith is a program that wants to invest in you every day to let you see that there's hope and purpose in serving the Lord. The struggle you're in right now is only temporary. There's nothing in your life, all the attacks of the enemy, all the discouragements that he puts upon you, it, you that is a temporary measure to try to stop you, but he can't do it forever. God has given you the victory, and God will, he'll, he'll never allow you to be tempted or tried above what you can bear. And I just want you to know that the sun, as here I'm believing God, I think today is, is the first day of spring today, or, or I, some, I think I heard someone say that earlier. I'm hoping for the sunshine of God's grace to shine upon me here in Tennessee instead of being freezing cold. It reminds me that I'm back in Scotland. And um, the reason, one of the reasons I moved from Scotland to America is because you have summertime. But we are just delighted to have you with it. If you could, share this program, let your friends know about it, and like this show and let us know if you're enjoying Daily Faith on a daily basis. We love you. We are delighted to have you with us. Welcome to Daily Faith. Welcome to Daily Faith. My name is Philip Cameron, and boy, am I glad to see you today. We have got a tremendous program. J. Mark Johns is with us, a brand new guest on Daily Faith, but I got a funny feeling that he's got a word from the Lord for you. We live and move and have our being by the anointing and the full of God that comes into our lives, and Daily Faith wants to be a part with you in your daily walk. That whatever you're going through just now, it is not the end of the world. God is on your side, and if God be for you, who can be against you? We can only see... I, I always think that we think that, you know, it's like a 59-41, I mean, 51-49 balance between the devil and the Lord, and one day the devil's up and the next day the Lord's up. I've got news for you. It isn't even close. God is high and lifted up. He is exalted above all your circumstances, and he wants you to know that he loves you with a love that will never let you go. You are written on the palm of his hands, the Bible says. And he is with you always, even to the end of this age. And whatever you're going through today, I promise you, God is working on a plan to set you free from it. So I am just delighted to have you with us. As many of you know, we do a great amount of mission work in Eastern Europe. We've been there for 35 years. And in Moldova and Ukraine, this last six years, we've had a home in Ukraine where we keep girls from being trafficked. And uh, this last, when the war took place, we had to take them to Moldova for a year. We've sent them back. And the good news is that we've just bought a, a van. The, 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 the problem with Ukraine is when and if Russia invades and goes into Odessa, all the roads will become, all the two-lane roads will become one lane out the way. And we've been worrying about having to go in to get the girls, to get them out from the Russian soldiers. And the problem is, all the lanes are going out the way and we couldn't get in. The last time we couldn't get into them. And uh, so we've been praying and believing God for a van. And I'm happy to tell you that yesterday we bought a van and it is going to be down in, it's a, it's a nine passenger Mercedes Vito. And that will give us a vehicle to let the girls escape. And um, because I don't, know if you, I don't know if you're watching the news or even aware of this, but Russia is gaining all the time and they are moving into Ukraine. And um, if that happens, 
it is going to be, a, here's a word that we're all using today, it's going to be a bloodbath, a real bloodbath. So pray with us as we continue to do this. We just got a video the other day from there, and I think you'll enjoy watching what God is doing in the work that God's given us there. Watch this. Catalina. Juliana. Anna. Tudor. Moldova, the poorest country in Europe, a place torn between the East and the West, stuck between yesterday and tomorrow. This tiny impoverished country has the highest level of alcohol consumption in the world and the highest death rate linked to drinking. Poverty and alcohol is a deadly mix. It breaks the home. It causes unimaginable suffering. It creates orphans. In this corruption-dominated society, orphanages become recruitment factories where girls and boys in the most vulnerable positions are handed over to traffickers as they age out of the system. Lack of opportunity, social support, and severe poverty make these kids desperate to leave their country, hopeful that they will find a more prosperous life elsewhere. But this combination of desperation and hope leaves many of them susceptible to the false promises of recruiters. Moldova is primarily a source country for men, women, and children forced into sex trafficking and forced labor. My father wanted to kill me. I grew up in an orphanage because my mother was sent to prison for killing my father. the knife from my father and pulled my beaten mother out of the house so he wouldn't kill her. I asked God why all of this is happening to my family and I thought that he forgot about us. I was supposed to be aborted. Me and my sister used to pick our clothes from the trash. Yet, in the midst of this sorrow, a miracle is taking place. Orphans are finding hope through the work of the orphans' hands. And because of your generosity, today, Vatra village is a place of warmth and comfort. Something most of these kids have never known. In these rooms, care and love, hope and healing transforms pain into purpose and loss into life. They are finding their broken hearts healed by God's love and hope is then turning into action. These amazing kids, once rescued and restored, 
have an unstoppable desire to return to those whose fears they understand, to reach the ones who are what they once were. And that is the miracle of what Orphan's Hands does. I was thinking this morning as I was praying, there's an old hymn, Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. And through folks like you helping us reach out to these young people that are the target for traffickers, that one of these girls, every girl you saw in that video, caught by a trafficker, would create over $300,000 a year in profit for a trafficker. And instead of that, we have a marvelous place called Vatra Village. In fact, we've just began right now. We've just started, and we have, we've got no video to show. It's just the decisions we made for us to open a children's home, a younger kid's home. And, and we are just so excited. as a, a, a brand-new challenge, and we can't wait. We can't do it without folks like you helping us. And um, all of it you see being done right now is being done by someone just like you, giving a dollar a day. A dollar a day won't change your future as far as finances goes. But for every face you saw in that video, a dollar a day has changed theirs. And I'd love you to help. Pray about being part with this miracle that we're, that we're watching every day. These kids come to us as orphans. And once they come to us, they hear the gospel and they give their hearts to Christ and they become like sons and daughters. I love when they talk about our ministry and our outreach. Instead of your outreach, it's, it becomes theirs. And uh, that turns them into missionaries. And all during this amazing time that's, that's happened in Ukraine, our kids have been out feeding refugees, feeding the homeless, feeding the kids that are living in, in, in hell right this minute. And it all comes down to someone like you in your house deciding to be a part of this miracle. You can give a dollar a day, and by doing so, you can change someone's life. Our address is very simple. The Orphan Sands, P.O. Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. The Orphan's Hands, P.O. Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee. You can go to dailyfaith.tv right now, dailyfaith.tv right this minute, and make a gift there. There's a giving page. Or you can call our 800 number, someone, a real person st standing by right now, 833-DAILY-FAITH. Just dial Daily Faith on your keypad, and a real-life person will talk to you, and you can be a part of something that's bigger than yourself. Don't curse the darkness. I know we're living in terrible times. I know... It seems like that hell's opened its portals and is trying to destroy our country and, and the world. But I believe there are still those that have not bowed the knee to Baal. There are still those that are standing up for what is right and righteous in this world. And I believe that you and I together can change lives in the name of Jesus. So please do that if you would, and I'd really appreciate it. My guest today is brand new. I've never met him before, but you kind of know someone pretty quick when, when you just you, you get that click in your spirit. And as I, I started talking to J. J. Mark, I felt just that we've known each other before. And um, he is pastor of Canvas Church in Alachua. Alachua. He's going to tell me what it is and correct me, I, I'm sure. I can give him some Scottish words if he wants to, and I can beat him down with all the mispronouncing. It's not Glasgow, it's Glasgow. It's not Edinburgh. It's Edinburgh. So before that, that's my, my defense anyway. J. Mark, is deli I'm delighted to have you on Daily Faith today. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic, Philip. It's, it's an honor to be with you. And uh, yeah, I, I, those, are, those are good tips if I, uh, when I get over to Scotland. It's actually a trip that I really do want to take, but it is, uh, uh, it's Alachua. And really, Alachua. we're in the city of Alachua. Uh, and it's Alachua is a so we had a lot of Native Americans that lived in this area uh -huh. and there were Seminoles, there were Muskegee Indians. And uh, the, my understanding is Alachua is a Muskegee Indian word that means sinkhole. And the reason it's called that is because we are in uh, uh, an area where there are seven major springs that are here. Yeah. In fact, this is the area that's kind of the cave diving capital of the world. People come from all over the Never world to dive the springs here. So. You know, I, I always tell that. people, God called me eight, 16 years ago to sinkhole. I just <laughs> hoped it wasn't prophetic. Well, I'll tell you what, I love, I, I, I've driven past your church. How we met was this. There's a, there's a coffee shop. I love Cuban coffee. I'm a tea drinker. Mm. I'm a Scottishman. I, I, I like tea. And my son got me a, a cup of Cuban coffee one day. 
And I thought, oh, this is different than normal coffee. And I, I love right. it. And at exit 399, I'm giving them a commercial right now. That's right. There's a store That's called right. Miapa. And across from Miapa is your church. And I've That's prayed right. over your church. Every time I go there, I'll reach my hand out and say, bless that church in the name of Jesus. And um, that Praise led God. us to inviting you on Daily Faith today. So big doors swing on small hinges. And That's uh, right. so I'm just, tell us about, I love the name of your church, Canvas Church. I know exactly <laughs> what you mean when, you, when, when, when I saw the name of the church. Tell us what God's vision is for you in, in your church. Well, when we started the church 16 years ago, uh, April 28th will be 16 years. We came here. Uh, God called us to this area. We didn't even really know why. Uh, my brother and I, I'd been an itinerant speaker for seven years in my yeah. 20s. Uh, 40 weeks a year all over the country, really all over the world. And then my brother and I, 35 miles north of here, we came together, planted a church in 1998. God bless that church. And it's still doing very well. He's still there. But God stirred my heart. I had a restlessness in my soul, as we know that the Lord sure. does, uh, and uh, to plant a church. But I had no idea why or what in the world, why Alachua. I just didn't know. I, I didn't know why we didn't go on down to Gainesville. Sure. There was something about this little bitty town that God had just arrested and constrained my heart about. Right. Only 9,300 people live in our little town. There's not even a Starbucks here. You got two red lights. Um, and we came here and started the church with 18 people in a living room, literally dug it out from absolutely wow. nothing. I didn't have any property, didn't have any people, didn't have any money, <clears throat> but we had a dream and we had a burden from the Lord. And anyway, we, we got here, we moved, we were portable for eight years. We moved four different locations. Yeah. Um, a university town, I don't know how familiar you are with it, but in a university town, there's a lot of liberal, uh, sure, very liberal absolutely. in university towns, and it's no exception here. So we were kicked out of a school. I had a principal that I had inherited that, uh, you know, didn't feel like church and, and school should mix that separation of church and state thing. Yeah. So I, they came in, kicked us out. It was just one, one difficult, really, thing after another for the first five, six, seven years. But something happened, and we just stayed with it. People ask me all the time, "How did what? What do you what do you what do you attribute the great impact and success of Canvas to be?" Yeah. And I just give them a very simple answer. I know God is good, but we outlasted the enemy. That's the way <laughs> we just are. outlasted yes, the uh, enemy. There there were a million reasons to quit. There were a million reasons to roll over. There were a million that's reasons that. to get. But I just. Uh, my mother would always, I just lost my mother about four months ago, but my mother was my secret weapon. She was my prayer warrior. She would always tell me, uh, baby, you're God's man for God's hour, for God's time. Just get up and go to work and leave the rest to God. He's yeah. the Lord of the harvest. Hallelujah. You are a scatterer. You are a planter. You are a plower. Absolutely. He is the Lord of the harvest. And so I would just get up every day, dust myself off, <laughs> go to work anyway. Long story short, we were we were winning souls. We came here to win souls to Hallelujah. Jesus. Um, one of the reasons why God led us here is that I did some research, and 73% of Alachua County, we're in the city of Alachua, but it's actually Alachua County, which includes Gainesville and six other mm. cities. 73% uh, of here in a 2005 census claim no religious affiliation whatsoever. So seven out of 10 people that you meet had nothing to do wow. with church and nothing to do with God. And so uh, one of the rules of, of of good fishing is fish where fish are. And so <laughs> we knew that God had called us into a dark place yeah. to to make an impact and to make a difference for him. And it was difficult for a long time. And, and, and not that it's ever going to get easier, but our church has grown from 18 people in a living room to 1,800 weekly attenders in a town with 9,300 people. We are a regional church. And what wow. we never saw happening that God saw yeah. God had this vision. You know, people come to me now and think that I saw all of this, that I had no. this, you know, I knew what it was going to be. I, I, I had no idea. No. We were just hanging on for dear life, preaching the gospel, trying to win people to Jesus. I hear you. He knew that he was going to create a regional move here. And so um, what we found out just last year was that 60 zip codes in 32 cities attend our church every Sunday and oh converge my. from all over North Florida. It's amazing. Well, I, I, I know, I know by looking at what you're doing already that God's hand is mm -hmm. on your, on your life and on your ministry. But you, yeah. what you said is so true. You, if you just keep busy, if you keep your head down and keep working and keep getting up and dusting yourself off, as you said, that is, that is the key, outlasting the enemy. And yeah. um, I know that our folk watching us today, pastors are watching us, and, and all kinds of folk are watching us today. And that's a word to the Lord from the Lord to you. 
if you're in a circumstance, yes. the one thing the devil doesn't know what to do is how to handle a quitter. If someone That's will right. refuse to quit, if, if someone says, yep. I'm getting up again. Uh, when I began to preach years ago in Scotland, we had a, a, a tent service in a town called Fraserburgh. It's only about 16 miles up the coast from us in Scotland. And I was, the, I was the, the doorman, I was the usher, I was the song leader, and I was the preacher. And oh, uh, yeah. this particular night, it was a rainy, damp, dark night in Scotland. And, and no one was in the tent, and I, I, was, I was discouraged beyond belief. And as I'm standing at the door of the tent, hoping someone would show up, this car came up the street quite fast, stopped, and a, a woman and a man and a, a young kid got out, and they ran towards me. I think, well, here's, thank God there's two or three coming. And just as they got to the mouth of the tent, where we'd been walking in and out all day, it kinda, it, it was, the, the, the grass had been worn away and it was mud. It was like a soup. And we call that right. dubs in Scottish. And I stepped out and I said, excuse me, watch the dub. And as I said that word, the wee boy who was between his mom and dad's hands, his foot stuck on the grass and he did a, fl a, a, a flight like into first base and he did a belly flop into this mud. <laughs> Splash. His mother lost her, she started to stomp her feet and she says, what are you doing down there? And the wee boy rolled over, covered in mud like he'd been dipped in chocolate. And he says, I'm wow. getting up. I'm getting up. <laughs> I love it. And I God wants it. everyone watching us today, J. Mark, to say yep. this to the devil in your circumstance. I don't know who you are in yep. your circumstance. Yep. I am getting up. And in 1924, uh, 2024 rather, this is not the year I'm going to quit, and I love I love that. It's, I, I just know. Well, I held on to Hebrews. I held on to Hebrews chapter twelve. Yeah. You know, the, the what does the Bible say? The Bible says that we look unto Jesus, the Author and the author. Finisher of our faith, yes. who for the joy set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The what what the Scripture tells us is clearly the only reason that Jesus found the tenacity, the power, and the will the, the willingness to be able to endure the pain and the suffering yeah. of the cross was because he had set his face like a flint to the joy that was set before him. Absolutely. He knew that if he could do this, on the other side was our redemption, our reconciliation, our restoration yes. to God. And he replayed that in his mind over and over, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was on the precipice of the, the, greatest, the greatest moment of his life, the most yeah. devastating moment of his entire life. He, he was thinking of, and we know this, of us. He was thinking of reconciliation and restoration. And you, ha you have to tell yourself that. You have to remind yourself that it's not always going to be this way. It's not always going to be this way. I would tell our church that when we were so discouraged. We had one of the venues that we were in was in a little cafeteria uh, of a, a an elementary school that was 70 years old. And everything that you can imagine about the sights, the sounds, and the smells of a 70-year-old cafeteria. Oh, my. Oh my. It was there. In fact, I told my wife this. Our church was about 100, 150 and when we were kicked out of the other school and, and we had to go over to the elementary school, uh, we walked into the cafeteria. The principal said, we don't have an auditorium. All we got is this little cafeteria, little eight-foot ceilings. It smelled funky. There was dried food Ever. on the back wall where the little kids <laughs> would dump their trays out. Uh. And uh, and I told my wife, I, I, this is a true story. I looked at her and I said, if the church is going to die, it's going to die in this room. Surely. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what God told me to do wow. until he either tells me different or it's over. And and so it was a two and a half hour setup and tear down in that wow. venue. And we were there for three years. And so our people were so discouraged at moments. They would have to get there at 6 a.m. Our ushers would. They would have to tear out all of these cafeteria tables, run our sound system, put up projectors, oh get everything set up, put up, to, you know, 150, 200 chairs. Then they would go to the bathroom, wash up, put on their usher shirts, come out, serve the Lord in the church. And then when everybody else left and went home and ate, then there would be a crew that would be there to put everything back for Monday morning for the school to meet again. Yeah. So it was incredibly difficult, incredibly discouraging. And I would just stand up and tell them when I could sense the morale of our church, they, people were so tired. And I would just, I would tell them, and I, look, I don't even know if I believed it. I'm just telling you, I spoke by faith. I just said, I it's not always going to be this way. God is going to do something. And if we if we just stay faithful to it, he's going to honor his word and he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And one day we're going to be able to look back and realize that because we were faithful in, in these little things, in these small moments, in these, these difficult moments, we're going to get to stand on the other side and rejoice to see the glory of the Lord and what he's going to do in the potential of this church. And it's absolutely true. And so, you know, even though we have a larger church now, 
there are two, 300 people that were with us in those difficult days. And it's amazing to me. They don't talk about now how beautiful our facility is and how glorious our facility is and how amazing things are now. When they talk, they talk about the fight. They talk about the war. They talk about uh, the days that we were willing to stand in the moment and just do what needed to be done for God to be able to bless it. And so that's the word that I, you know, we, we mentor about 11 church planters. We've helped plant seven churches out of our church. And that's the one thing that I always try to encourage church planters with church planting is kind of, I call it the Navy seals of the church world. When you are willing to just parachute in and to, to go into nothing and to put your family, your life on the line and dig something out of nothing. I I thank God for it. I got a soft spot for church planters, but it's going to be a lot of dark, difficult, discouraging days. But if you stay faithful and get up every day, give it to God, scatter seed, plant and plow, The Lord of the harvest will do what he said he's going to do. Here's a scripture for you. James 1, 12, NIV. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because yes. having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that yeah. the Lord has promised to those who love him. Praise I'm God. always amazed, right. J-, J. Mark, when, when we do a program, how it's, the Holy Ghost kind of sets a theme that we don't plan. We, you know, I didn't have any discussions as to what we would talk about. But from the very first words I spoke in the beginning to even just introduce the program, the whole point mm-hmm. has been don't quit. And I know there are people watching us today. I, I was, I was at Marcus Lamb of Daystar was a great friend of mine for 40 years. And yeah. uh, he came to me one day and, and I was struggling. I was building a ministry in Alabama at the time. And he came to see me and I was discouraged. And he said, let me tell you something, Philip. I've just written my first $1 million check. He says, we're, we're wow. reaching around the world. He said, but the days that I liked the most and I remember the most was when Joni and I, Joni was eight and a half months pregnant in a little st- storefront in Montgomery, Alabama with no money and our living yeah. room furniture was in the set of the TV program. He says, we don't talk about all the stuff we're doing now. We remember back the way. And someone watching right. us today is going through a storm in their life and they're thinking, I can't, I, I don't know how I'm going to go through this thing. Well, the Lord sent two people a Scotsman and an American to sit in your house today or on your device to tell you that today is not the day to quit. Stir yourself, shake yourself and say, devil, Mm -hmm. I might be beaten and bruised, but I'm getting up in the name of Jesus. And and 2024 is my year of success. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us today. Will you promise to come back? I'd love to have you back. And I've got a funny feeling of a, of a deep well to, 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 to drink from when you are come to be with us. For sure, Philip. I'd be glad to do that. I appreciate what you're doing, praying for you and your ministry. Thank you, Thanks for having me on today. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. That is J. Mark Johns from Canvas Church in, I'm going to, Aluchua, Aluchua, Aluchua. Help me, Lord. Canvas, www.canvasfl.com. Canvasfl.com. And if ever you're going down to see Mickey Mouse, you need to stop at exit 399. And um, he, he told me they've got a coffee shop in their church. So don't go to the one across the street. Go in there and visit my friends there. And I believe that God will be a great blessing. If you're going to see the mouse, you've got to stop in at Canvas Church. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching Daily Faith. Pray for us as we continue our work overseas. And let's believe God for great things. We are so glad you've been part of today's program. God bless. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their Heavenly Father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, They want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. 
Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to www.dailyfaith.tv or by writing to Post Office Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost.